there's a recent video of Sachin Tendulkar on social media in which he's seen serving his mom a freshly cut mango. That video tells us so many things. It talks about a loving son, talks about an affectionate family man, talks about, of course, the greatest sports person this country has seen. And it also tells us one more thing. It talks about how simple this man is apropos of what his career has been like. Welcome, Sachin. Thank you so much. Today, as the master is on the brink of turning 50, we're going to talk about those little things and how he goes about doing them with simplicity day in and day out. Welcome to Network 18. Given your conversion rate, I'm wondering it's only a matter of time before you get to 100. <laughs> I hope there is DRS. <laughs> On a lighter side. <laughs> <laughs> so, what has been going on? Uh, you know, what I'm sure there are thoughts going on in your mind as 50 approaches. And what is it like? I still don't feel like I'm 50, honestly speaking. I'd much rather put it differently. 25 year old with 25 years of experience sounds better. Uh, it's been a it's been a wonderful journey. I, I have no complaints, no regrets. Uh, 24 years that I got a chance to play for a country has been a huge, huge honor and a dream come true. That's, that is all I wanted in life. I did not want to be anything else. From the age of 10, I started chasing my dream and then to be able to do that for 24 years, couldn't have asked for more. But what is celebration like at 50? Like, uh, what will Sachin Tendulkar be doing uh, for <laughs> celebration? A quiet family meal, probably sneak out with Anjali, you know, kind of, or... or. It's going to be a bit of surprise for me also, <laughs> forget about you, but me also, it's supposed to be a surprise. Uh, no, I mean, there are not going to be big celebrations. I'm not a person of big parties and big celebrations and all that. I don't remember going over the top, celebrating my birthdays. Uh, yeah, I mean, call close friends and all that, that is fine but uh, not going over the top so i'm sure uh, this time also there'll be something planned but not at a mega scale just close friends right let's talk about life post retirement the last 10 years what have these last 10 years been like uh, from the outside uh, the way we've been tracking you a few things obviously stand out uh, yeah. your love for golf which seems to be it. growing by the day yes and uh, your pension for driving seems to be the same. You love your cars, which <laughs> we obviously get to follow on social media. Yes, yes. And then uh, the amount of time that you've been spending in the kitchen these days. The other day I saw you uh, make mango kulfi and <laughs> your eye for detail. And then, then the last thing is the kind of traveling that you're doing, exploring new places. We are getting to see different things. So what's happening? Talk about these 10 years. <laughs> no, 10 years I've... I've done I whatever I felt like to be honest because before that when I was playing for India then whatever the schedule was finalized I had to work everything around that schedule. Now I have the comfort of planning my schedule so I do that and then the priority is obviously the family and friends. So important family occasions uh, those moments I don't want to miss because there were occasions earlier when my children's birthdays, uh, Sarah's birthday or Arjun's birthday, I wasn't there, you know, and then there's not much I could do, you know, so I wanted to be there, but I was in some part of the world playing for India, so I, mean, I was just hoping that, you know, when they grow up, they'll, they'll understand that I was out and missed their birthday for a reason, so number of special occasions like that, but now, uh, things are different. Uh, I'm getting more personal time, family time. And other things, uh, various commitments keep happening around that. And uh, something which I've uh, kind of uh, always felt that I should be doing at a larger scale is, uh, like I said, second innings of my life, I would like to bat for India. I want to continue doing that and score even more runs. You know, by by helping the less privileged ones uh, across uh, the country, and there is so much need. So we were we were doing that earlier as well, but what we have done, uh, you know, post retirement, we've kind of structurized that 
and identified certain areas, certain verticals where uh, you know we would want to focus more. And uh, the the areas, three verticals are the health, education, and Spot. uh, sports for children. Uh, so my foundation, Sachin Tendulkar Foundation. Uh, of course, my my name is there, but the but the captain of the ship is Anjali. Uh, being a being a pediatrician, you know, it helps because she thinks differently. She is extremely committed and extremely driven by this because uh, we all believe uh, we have a solid team and we all believe that we are in a position to to impact lives. Though we we keep pushing each other. Right. as much as we possibly can and uh, that is how we are going to produce results you know so uh, feeling happy about whatever has happened is good but we are not satisfied and that is how it was on a cricket field we would want to continue that in the second innings of my life as well I still remember in your retirement speech you just spoke about the greatest partnership of your life and I'm sure this is bound to kind of give the best mm -hmm. results which reminds me, after retiring from the game, how long did it actually take you to kind of uh, realize that, listen, I mean, I don't have to wake up and go to the next, I mean, <laughs> life has changed. Maybe it didn't happen the very next morning, right? How long before you actually got used to the fact that you could slow down a bit? See, my, my retirement was gradual. So I, it wasn't that, you know, I suddenly retired and from tomorrow morning, oh, what do I do? Where do I go? It was never a situation like that. I first retired from ODIs. Then I retired from IPL, and then I retired from Test cricket. And I always wanted that one big game for India. I didn't want multiple retirements, you know. So just that one moment, and it came at the right time, you know. What a moment! Playing, playing a Test match for India, home ground. We won the game, and that victory lap was was an incredible moment. So. I always used to wonder how would my last experience on the field would be and uh, I can't thank everyone enough because that experience is something which has you know 10 years down the line we are still talking about it and uh, when I when I woke up the next morning I have this habit of making my own tea and all that either coffee or tea whatever I feel like having I did exactly the same okay. I sat at home and I I was, you know, it felt a little different. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to now start preparing for the next series or the next match, whatever. I need not think about all those things. It did feel that way. So I think those memories start rushing back. Tell me that entire, what we saw, uh, you know, uh, after the game got over, the presentation ceremony, all of that was impromptu, like all of that was happening real time. I mean, how much of actually. You know, the match was first of all <laughs> a five-day game, yes, which didn't last five days. On the third evening itself, we were doing yes. this interview. And uh, I still remember post-match presentation. I was down there along with my teammates and uh, thinking that uh, this is the last time I'm standing with the team. It's never going to happen again in my life. I'm never going to walk on the field as an active Indian cricketer and uh, I was in the dressing room I said you know if we have a press conference on the sixth morning so five day test match then we finished this function and we had organized a press conference on yes. sixth morning so I said six day by then you know two days would have passed right now you know people would want to know my views and all that and uh, I should speak so when the when the Star TV guy came to me, he said uh, the program is you know the losing captain would be called. They would be man of the series, man of the match, and all that. Then they will call you, and then the winning captain, and then you guys. Once the winning captain's interview is done, then you guys do a group photograph with the trophy. I said, what is my role in this? He said, you will be called. Ravi was going to interview me. He said, Ravi is going to ask you three questions. So I made a request there. I said, is, is it possible that I speak for some time rather than answering two, three questions? And he said, the field is yours. You can go and speak for as long as you want. I said, My, this time I'm not going to speak for three, four minutes. It may, may be a little longer than that. 
Though but, I mean, until I, then I ended not, up speaking for 20 minutes apparently. And, and until that you were not prepared for anything that you were going to. No, I more or less knew what I was going to say. Yeah. You know, that's why I had written down the names. Because I didn't want to forget anyone. So I had written down the names and each person I kind of knew what I was going to say. But a uh, number of things happened there and then I saw Saura, Rahul and Lakshman on, yeah, on, on the screen. mega screen. And <laughs> I spoke to them also through that. So these those kind of things kept happening but it wasn't planned. Everything was unplanned and you know, it's just a message from up above that, you know, do it now and I did that. Okay. Now, the moment happened, you said the next morning you woke up and you made your cup of uh, tea and, and, you know, kind of... And then, from there on, not picking up a bat and going to, uh, you know, <laughs> even for fun, like how gradual has that process been? I'm sure you would have felt the urge, like, once a week at least, to like, chatam thoda sa. I've seen this... Um, <laughs> A uh, reel of yours where I think you're on a badminton court yeah. indoor and you're yeah. facing a tennis ball. Yeah. The shots are coming so beautifully and I'm <laughs> sure you would feel that urge, right? I mean, we do that sometimes, we do it. You go out and play uh, once in a while? Or is it more yeah, golf? Yeah, I did that. I mean, golf, uh, badminton, you know, uh, all these kind of things. We friends get together and we do that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, only on few occasions the camera is on, otherwise, you know, <laughs> we have our own space and we have a lot of fun. W what is it about golf? Like, does it satisfy your your urge as a cricketer, the swing, the back lift, or kind of, does it give you that it's, satisfaction? It's more about spending time with your friends. Okay. And that is priceless for me. I cannot live without my friends. So, okay. friends' time is important. <laughs> So okay, talk we, about So we friends get together, we play golf, you know, we have a good chat. Right. That. Family time is of course there, but I need friends to be around me as well. Talking about friends, I remember this other uh, reel which I'm becoming uh, kind of, I should tell uh, the viewers here that, you know, I, I've just fallen in love with the reels and I keep binge watching uh, what he does. So there's this other reel of yours in which uh, you are driving somewhere with a friend and right. uh, you stop by at a tea shop, at a uh, roadside yeah, tea shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a cup of chai yeah, correct, there. Correct. And uh, and I, what also I remember is uh, Arjun is sitting uh, behind the car. He's Arjun was, peeping yeah. above the door, looking at you like, Papa, what all are you, <laughs> are you doing? Kind of, no, you know. I, I, we, we friends, we felt like having, chalo yaar, chai pite and uske saath, you know, those naan katai biscuits. Said, so we'll have that. Brilliant spot to have. Nobody is expecting here. Right. right. So we parked the car and we started having chai and all that. I went there. I asked for my chai and all that. It was it was good fun. So we were we were just driving and uh, you know once we had recorded that the last bit was camera on Arjun. Arjun is not fond of cameras and so is Anjali. Sara Sara is okay, but Arjun like okay leave me out of this and that was his expression. <laughs> yes, I remember <laughs> that. Mr. Shin, you, uh, you know, I was thinking about it also from the tea stall owner's perspective. For you, it is a matter of five minutes, but for him, you made his life. Like, kind of, he will think about it for the rest of his life that Sachin Tendulkar is here, and he chai drink tea. Like, you know, <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, does it, does it, like, make you wonder, like, what a small gesture of yours, you know, is doing to a, a, a random outsider? And it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. I mean, like, I would... Hope you keep uh, doing that. Satisfaction is mutual. Because I get the satisfaction of chai and naan katai over there. So, <laughs> I'm also happy. He's also happy. It works both ways. Okay. Now, do you know what was the price of gold in 1995? 10 grams gold? No. <laughs> 4,300 rupees. 10 grams of gold. Today, the price of 10 grams gold is 57,000 going on 58. Okay. Why right. this is important is because <laughs> in 1995, Sachin mm. Tendulkar became the first uh, sports person to professionally sign a contract uh, with, with, uh, World Health. with World Health. Huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The that with Mark Muscarinus. With yeah, Mark yeah. Muscarinus. Yeah. Uh, the 1995. And it, and it happened through Ravi. Right. Ravi Shastri. I still remember we were in Sri Lanka at that time and Ravi introduced me to Mark. Ravi said, here's my friend, Mark, who's been wanting to meet you and he has something to share with you. 
and uh, then uh, it was Ravi, Mark and I three sat together and that's where Mark uh, made me that offer and said uh, why don't you just stay focused only on the game and my company will manage the commercial side. So all the endorsements and contracts and whatever one had to sign, everything was vetted by Mark and his, his team. It was only done so that I could be totally focused on the exactly. game because till that moment, yes, there were lawyers helping me, but my family was actively involved in that and then negotiating and all that. I mean, to be honest, I mean, we were not made for that. So father, a professor and a poet, my brother was interested in uh, the, the right column of the scorebook. Not, that account was more important than the bank account. Nobody was bothered literally and what the bank balance is. How many runs have you scored? What has happened to the game? That was more important. So I don't think uh, you know our strengths were to uh, negotiate a contract or vet a contract. Not really. And we needed a team who could you know take away that literally that headache from us, so that I could be focused only on the game. I was just going through somewhere and. Uh, uh, I was told that in the last 100 years, only 305 people have played for the country. And so that means, on an average, only three people play for the country every year. So such a huge honor, such a massive privilege to represent the nation. I didn't want to you know, divide my energy, that the energy needed to be only channelized on cricket and nothing else. And that was my family's thought process as well, which, which really helped. Uh, Mark was someone who, when it came to my practice sessions and my preparation, he did not interfere at all. He said, everything will happen around that. I'm not going to make you cancel your practice session so that you could shoot an ad for it. So it never happened, where Mark was forcing me, ne, aaj rehne do. You, you know, practice tomorrow, let's shoot this ad today. It never happened. It's one of the most special relations you've had in life? You're... Without any doubt, without any doubt. Mark was more like a family, I would say. You're Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Mark was, see, he did not discuss numbers with me, to be honest, because he himself was such a huge fan fan of cricket, loved the sport from the bottom of his heart and helped so many ex-cricketers as well. So he understood, I mean, because he followed cricket, he understood what are the things which are needed to represent a nation and preparation becomes really important. If you are to deliver, if you are not prepared, how will you deliver? So he never interrupted that. Wow. I, I was looking at the enormity of what happened in those years and, you know, uh, the value of gold is something that stuck in my mind. And I was thinking, we're talking about a time when there was no technology, no internet, nothing. I mean, you know, you're talking about the cricketer who became the first boss person in India to sign it, a professional contract. Uh, there, there was no internet and all that you mentioned and that, you know, rings a bell. I mean, I, I'll tell you one story which I've not shared with many. Uh, in the first half of my career, I used to come back home from long tours with multiple video cassettes and both me and my brother Ajit, we would sit together and go through each and every ball played on that tour and then the areas where I did well were also marked and the areas where I needed to make certain changes, those things were discussed and that's why, you know, I would kind of remember what has happened because I have watched that multiple times. Though it has, in reality, happened only once there in the middle. But off the field, we've sat together and watched that, you know, 50, 60 times. And those were the days. And that's why when you spoke about internet, YouTube and all that, nothing was there. Video cassettes were there. Wow. Okay, I mean, these days, I, I was in fact telling a few colleagues as I was preparing for this interview. And, uh, you know, I, I we were discussing in office how these days we get press releases of brand endorsements and today's modern day, uh, you know, kind of celebrities. And then I keep going back to that uh, 
maybe a, a simple soldering commercial that you must have done in the 90s the charm of those videos and that young sachin that stuck in the minds of not people who identified with you as a batter mm-hmm. or as a cricketer on the field and uh, this i can tell you from personal experience like you know women in the house children in the house grandparents in the house and how the simplicity of it all is uh, has been spellbinding <laughs> uh which in fact uh, brings me to another incident and this is something i want to understand from you uh, what you think about it the sachin tendulkar growth story is so so synonymous in many ways with uh, the india growth story and i tell you why i'm saying this is i'm, I'm sure you uh, people have spoken about this earlier also but i'll just give you an example here um Sunil Gavaskar when you know when we were consuming Sunil Gavaskar the mm-hmm. batter uh, there was black and white tv at home grainy television uh, screen right we could never see his face under the mm-hmm. floppy hat mm-hmm. and he wore that skull cap we could never see his face i remember as a kid going close to the television sticking my nose up to the screen to try and see him <laughs> see his face and you know but your arrival uh, was timed with the advent of cable television color television came into the living rooms uh, in india right and we could see sachin's face from under uh, the white hat we didn't have to wait for a picture of sachin tendulkar in the magazine to see sachin we could see him mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. on the field um you obviously kind of you know you were just getting into the scheme of things at that time what was it in your what was going on in your mind every single year passing year has been synonymous with the india growth story you make your debut I remember 1990 the government changes 91 economic liberation 92 cable tv comes in your century happens i mean it's all so it, when you look back little tough for me to step aside and say that oh this is what happened and all that but you know from my own experience cricketing experience yeah. purely i can uh, tell you that the number of changes happen and uh, from the m- mid 90s things change dramatically in fact uh, when the 1996 world cup was played in india i could i could immediately notice there was a significant change as far as the the standard of the stadiums was concerned the the playing surfaces w- was concerned the uh, grounds were in much much better shape and from there on things started changing what i noticed in cricket of course the nation changed dramatically but uh, from a cricketer's point of view young cricketer's point of view uh, i thought the infrastructure in our country started changing uh, and uh, with the world cup having uh, played in india uh, that i thought that uh, you know eagerness those uh aspirations and uh, youngsters wanting to chase their dreams was suddenly you know it it took off the whole thing and uh, i felt you know the the next generation that we saw uh, from 2002 to 2003 onwards because they had played on better grounds their style of fielding was also different though before that there were few natural fielders but the rest while diving or sliding you know and i would like to include myself in the rest because diving and sliding did not come naturally to me i mean i've practiced on grounds where you know if you slide or you dive you kind of bandaging your uh, elbow or the side of your thigh for a week right. and can't afford to do that so you know one one try to stop the ball with the foot and if if it happened on those grounds it happened if not then you have to go out and score four extra runs that was a thought process but those kind of changes happened and then we started finding you know fielders who were at a different level i must okay. say that okay. everything started changing and uh, ready to bcci for that and then uh, that the change the birth of that change took place in 1996 as what i would say one more important point uh, as we speak i'd like to make is we we also started seeing players from smaller parts of india 
you know, not the major four or five centers, you know, and then there's some world class players I mean, who came from the other parts of India as well, and, and rightly so. But that happened because the infrastructure was there. Right. And uh, by then, cricket also had uh, begun to promise the aspect of a career. I, I mean, I remember Zaheer's story. Uh, this young yeah. engineering student yeah. coming from Sri Rampur. Yeah, exactly. Time. At that exactly. time, it used to like, you know, you ladka kahan se wo Ahmednagar, there is a small town near Ahmednagar from where this boy comes, yeah. you know. And then an engineer in the making takes that leap of faith Correct. in life. And all of this was a result of the late 90s, that, that the boom that you're talking about? Absolutely. Because, because you, somewhere it has to start. And then you can, I mean, that initial push is really important and then once you've set the ball rolling, then you know, once in a while a gentle nudge is okay. And the ball starts rolling, ball continues to roll. But that initial push when the ball is not rolling is when the maximum effort is required. And that effort was uh, in 1996 is what I feel. Right. So post turn of the century, uh, during that time is when Sachin goes on from Sachin to Sachin Paji. Now, from the outsider, um, as a, uh, as somebody chronicling this in hindsight, is that also the time when brand Sachin also moved on to become brand SRT? Uh, you know, to, because this renewed... To answer your first question, Sachin became Sachin Paji only because there were a number of guys from, from northern part of India. Right. And they started calling me Paji. So then it went to the extent where the rest of the guys also started calling me Paji. And guys from Mumbai also started calling me Paji. I would be like, Are yaar, tum, tum mujhe Sachin bolo, tum Paji kyu bol rahe ho? and all that. But no, any, that, is, that is your name now. So everyone started calling me Paji. And to answer your second question about brand Sachin, I only wore a cricketer's hat. I did not wear a marketing hat at all. So I don't know what the marketing guys were thinking from Sachin to SRT, you know, uh, it was possibly from there and that all these things came up. Right. I was comfortable I and mean, it didn't, didn't make much of a difference because I would anyways have my initials on my hat, which was a <laughs> cricket hat. <laughs> right. And the reason I asked you this is because when I look back at things in hindsight, when I sit down to chronicle this, um, it was, in hindsight, this is so humongous in terms of not what it did to brand SRT, but what it did to the ecosystem. The entire ecosystem began to benefit with those initial footprints that you began to leave behind. Like in 1995, when you signed your first deal, you brought professionalism, uh, you know, into the scheme of things. And in 2001, when you renewed that deal, yep. you, you kind of, of course, the professionalism bit continued. But then you opened up the front gates for India to look at a new future from a sports perspective. Is when I think the mothers agreed to <laughs> allowing their child to play cricket from with a career perspective. Yeah, I, I remember when I signed the contract in 1995, uh, certain people didn't agree with that and there were also opinions on that. He, now I'm chasing money. In fact, it was the other way around. I wanted to be totally focused on cricket and nothing else. And that that was a big moment in my life because it allowed me to only focus on cricket. But all said and done, you know, one may want to be focused on cricket, but if you've got pending things, uh, you are bound to take some interest in those things and make sure that, you know, everything is aligned properly. Uh, I didn't have to do all those things. Uh, you know, before that, it was my brother who, who looked after everything. And uh, my father would also uh, at times uh, get involved. Uh, but after that, uh, you know, little bit here and there, family involvement was there. Uh, when I got married, then Anjali also became part of it. Her father uh, would also sometimes take a dress and uh, help us out. So it was a big team working on it. But, but we knew that the major major job was being handled by Mark and his team. Moving on from 2001, a uh, couple of years later, to 2005 to be specific, I have this photographic memory 
which I uh, uh, can like kind of remember it like it happened yesterday, mm-hmm. is uh, there was a Dilip Trophy match between West Zone and South Zone in Hyderabad, uh, uh, in Uppal, the Correct. new stadium, Correct. which was still just coming up. Uh, the yes. work was still going on. Yes. Now, it was a big match in terms of who all played it. Uh, you know, uh, there was Anil Kumble, Anil BBS Lose Lakshman, and Rahul Balaji, Dravid. All, uh, exactly. Rahul. Zaheer, all of them Papa. played. Zaheer but why Rajin. that? Yes, but Rajin why that match yeah. was so important is because you were making a comeback after the tennis elbow oh, uh, injury. Okay. What I remember very clearly in that game is that you got out of the car mm-hmm. um, and it was a dark uh, hallway, the yeah. Uppal Stadium hallway Correct. because construction was still going yes, on. Yes, yes. There were photographers inside when you walked out of the car and you came in, that the, the bunch of photographers, the flash bulbs went and it was daylight inside that uh, hallway. I, I, I still <laughs> remember it distinctly. And those shutter bugs, the noise that it made, this, this clicking sound of yeah. the camera. Yeah. The only other place I've seen it is inside a forest. <laughs> when a tiger gets, uh, the tiger's <laughs> acting happens. What I'm saying is like, you know, when you were coming back, it was such an important phase. Did anything in your career pull you down the way the tennis elbow injury did? I think my back injury. Okay. My back injury troubled me a lot. And that continued for quite some time almost uh, 10 months or so. Uh, though I played matches in between, but with a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort. Uh, for almost uh, three to four months, I slept in uh, my hotel rooms between my bed and the cupboard so that I could not roll onto my tummy. I had to rest my back completely, uh, get my uh, handbag and put couple of pillows inside my handbag and put those pillows under my knee so that the back would rest otherwise back would constantly stay like this right. into spasm so once I lifted my knees the back would become flat and the back would rest and that is exactly what the doctors had asked me to do uh, and uh, you know taking painkillers as if there is no tomorrow literally three painkillers a day. Before every session, I would take one painkiller and go and play. I pushed my body to the limit. And uh, then I was also uh, advised that I should undergo a surgery, a major surgery, which I I was, back in the 90s, you know, uh, today with technology and uh, multiple uh, things happening around in medical field, Back surgery is a big one, but not kind of the end of your career. But at that stage, you know, I was kind of uh, so worried. I thought, you know, it could possibly be the end of my career. If, if the surgery goes bad, then I am struggling because I have, uh, I have suffered so much where while standing, I could not even go and touch my knees. I couldn't bend at all. If I had to sit in a chair like this, it wouldn't be longer than two or three minutes at a stretch. I had to keep changing my positions and, you know, that that was a nightmare. So possibly that, I would say. In fact, uh, if, a ma- if, if a diagram of a human body has to be drawn and the number of injuries and the number of times that you suffered have to be probably marked on the diagram. I think it's the easiest lesson for a kid to understand what human... Uh... Well, I mean, the, the number of injuries that I that I have had in my career, I am also kind of 50% doctor. 50% knowledge is dangerous though. <laughs> have you even taken, ever taken your doctors out for a meal? They deserve me, it. Me, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I, I meet uh, doctor friends, I mean, and, and now the ones who've uh, treated me, you know, they're, they're friends, and, and you know, they've played a huge role in my, my life. Uh, all of them, the doctors, and the physios, uh, masseurs, you know, they've all played a big role in my life. You know, if, if, if uh, they weren't around, then things would have been different. What's your daily routine like as of today? Um, you know, I mean, who better than you to answer what should be the cornerstone <laughs> no, of a healthy lifestyle? No, no set routine as such, but uh, my simple formula in life is uh, I can eat whatever I want, but not whenever I want. Okay. So once you strike that balance, then you're okay. Uh, on a lighter note, I used to tell my friends, you know, 
जिम में दस मिनट ज़्यादा बैठो और डाइनिंग टेबल पे कम बैठो दैट इज़ अनदर फॉर्मूला बट आइडियली आई वुड से यस वन नीड्स टू ट्रेन बी एक्टिव इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो एंड ट्रेन इन अ जिम यू कुड गो ऑन वॉक्स जॉग वट एवर प्ले एनी स्पॉट आई फील एवरी इंडिविजुअल शुड पिक अप अ स्पॉट एनी स्पॉट दैट कीप्स यू मेंटली हेल्थी एज वेल एज फिजिकली आई थिंक मेंटल हेल्थ इज ऑल्सो इक्वली इम्पॉर्टेंट विच वन इग्नोर्स सो आई थिंक ओवरऑल फिटनेस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इट्स नॉट जस्ट द लुक्स यू नो बट वॉट्स हैपनिंग इन साइड बॉडी मोर इम्पॉर्टेंटली इन साइड योर हेड राइट यू नो हाउ हाउ मेंटली फिट आर यू दैट इज ऑल्सो दैट इज पॉसिबली इवन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट सच इन दीज डेज वेन आई वॉच टी ट्वेंटी क्रिकेट यू नो आई टेंट टू थिंक दैट दीज मैच I don't correct me if I would. I would love to understand what you think. Is these matches lack any kind of recollection value? I remember uh, growing up at a time when we would remember matches, and for that I don't mean uh, it necessarily wouldn't have to be a ten wicket haul or a big daddy hundred mm. for mm. me to mm. remember a game. Yeah. You know your innings in Auckland at uh, you know forty nine ball eighty two for instance against uh, New Zealand. or you know the last wicket uh, of moin khan but i'll never forget right. it for the, mm-hmm. for the rest of my life you know yeah. that googly mm-hmm. and these so do you think in t20 cricket the recollection value of a game is not the same as it used to be in in cricket and uh, and i'm wondering if this generation continues 20 years later what next i mean what is t20 format is full of action you know uh, every Well, if not every ball, then every over for sure. People are expecting something to happen, something big to happen. You know, either a big shot or that reverse sweep or whatever over keepers head. Something the batters are going to try. Very very rarely do we see that. You know, two three overs are quiet overs. People are used to that action. So out of those multiple actions, whatever, you know. how does one remember everything you know the only the mega moments are going to be remembered uh, just the other day you know rinku singh hit five sixes right. in a row that's going to be remembered you know because i still remember carlos brethwet hitting four sixes in the last over so those kind of things uh, will always be remembered you know right. so so i feel uh, you know today's generation is such that we 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 like to move quickly i mean little bit impatient if i may use that word right. uh, we want quick results and that is how it is and that is how possibly the format is it's a very fast moving format and there only those mega moments are going to be remembered talk about today's generation and formats uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, how complicated is the sport becoming rules rules and rules like across across formats i mean it's rules. only becoming complicated because we continue to change rules if we have a set of rules and we kind of stick to those rules if they're working well then it won't be that complicating but we have few to be fair we also have three different formats uh, there are not many sports where uh, where you have different formats I, i can't think of anything else very very few if at all uh, tennis you continue to you know play with the same set of rules uh, be it men or women i mean just the number of sets are reduced right but the kind of rules that they play with they're exactly the same set of rules so cricket possibly might be the only one where there are three different formats and uh, you know the number of balls used uh, the number of overs you have to play with that particular ball in test cricket it's minimum 80 then odi is now it's become 25 and uh, t20 so number of fielders in the ring test there is no restriction so cricket is possibly the only sport which is slightly different to any other sport existing rules changing yes i mean that's an important point you make but other than that there are some rules which i like umpires call for instance uh, you know when a decision has been referred to the tv umpire third umpire <laughs> it is because the player is not satisfied with what is being are you with me in the same boat i'm asking Sir, i mean i 
I fail to understand honestly what they are thinking, honestly, because uh, I feel if a ball is hitting any part of the stump, it's out, and that is that is for both teams, right? It's not that for team A you are using technology and for team B you are leaving it to the main umpire. No, we are once we go to the third umpire, it's a clear cut indication to me that somebody on field is unhappy with that decision and doesn't agree with that decision. That's why they want to go upstairs. So why come back to the person whom they don't trust? And that's why they've gone up, right? They've taken the risk of challenging his decision. And if they don't get it right, they lose their review. So why do we come back again? We don't need to come back. Forget about the on-field umpire. No disrespect. I know before all this happened, number of games where you know umpires made mistakes and it cost us a game. So we are worried about technology not being foolproof. If the technology is not foolproof, then you don't have it. And if you want to use it, then trust. <laughs> we have to trust technology then. Right now what is happening, in the same cup, thoda chai dal do and thoda coffee bhi dal do. You know, it's not that. For me, it doesn't work. For example, 50% of the ball touching the sums, how do you measure 50% of the ball? Like it could be 49% will not work. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't understand. I mean, I. I find that really strange. The reason why T20 came into focus was because a viewer was not able to dedicate seven, seven and a half hours for a one day game anymore. Yep. The, that consumption time had to be brought down. And that's why one thought that, you know, a T20 could suffice because it was a three hour mm -hmm. game. Now this very T20 stretching into four and a half hours, is that justice enough to what was the model that was designed? See, the actual playing time for both teams put together is around three hours or so. And if a side is not keeping up with the timing and, and they're you know, lacking behind, then uh, that is where the penalty comes into play and the penalty is there. To have one extra fielder in the ring is very, very uh, harsh. And that is how a penalty should be. It cannot be a soft one. I mean, you have to, you have to pay a price for that. Right. Sachin, hasn't there been a relative decline in batters who could bowl, uh, you know, uh, from your time? I mean, you, Viru, Dada, Yui, there were so many who could just roll their arm over and, uh, you know, it was so effective. Uh, maybe the, you know, the sidearms are a common sight now. But are they finishing this concept of batters who could uh, bowl? I mean, I, by uh, the way, I don't see batters bowling in the nets also these days. Like, kind of, that's another... You know, I really cannot answer for the current team. I don't know what's happening and the injury status or whatever that may be. But as far as uh, our earlier generation was concerned, our generation, the names that you took, we bowled. I mean, we, we enjoyed and I, I had a lot of fun. I can speak for myself. And with great results. I That was, uh, you know, it, it happened, whatever. And, and then we, the most important thing was uh, I enjoyed bowling. Right from my school days, I, I didn't didn't want to be a spectator there, watch others play. I had to be there in the middle of action, you know. And then I enjoyed, you know, playing those mind games with a batter. I enjoyed doing those things, and we would set fields and you know, play a mini match. So those kind of things I enjoyed. I really don't know. I'm not in a position to answer why these guys are not bowling. Right, I, I right. really don't know. To conclude this wonderful conversation, I this is the year of the World Cup, so we cannot uh, not talk about the format, which is the 50 over World there Cup. There is World Cup up. happening every year. Oh yeah, there is a World <laughs> Cup now every year. But again, a 50 over World Cup which is happening this year. Yeah. Uh, there is something that, again, it's been on my mind. And the fact that it's a format but in general has been in discussion in terms of, you know, what is the future of the 50 over format. At a time like that, the World Cup on, in this format is happening in cricket's biggest market anywhere in the world, which is yep. India. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I feel that the excitement is so huge and so, so much, you know. Uh, 
But post this World Cup, do you think that there is a need to sit down and try and understand uh, 50 over cricket once again from a wholesome all-round perspective and try and understand where this format needs to go into the future? And your I thoughts hope, on, and I your hope thoughts on that the World happens. Cup also. I hope that happens because, uh, because to change the format, there are there are reasons for that, you know, and then. I, I had kind of thought of this long time ago and I'd shared these ideas also earlier. Uh, I, I felt that a coin cannot decide the destiny of that game because just because you've lost the toss, you cannot be bowling second when there are dewy conditions, bowlers cannot grip the ball and side batting second, you know, unless they bat like, I mean, terribly, terribly, they will not lose. They have to just go and play normal cricket because the conditions are in their favour. Ball is not going to swing after maybe first 6-7 overs or 4-5 overs literally. Once the ball gets wet, it's not going to swing, neither will it turn. And with 5 fielders in the ring, there is hardly a bowler can do. And, and that I feel is is a big imbalance between a bat and a ball contest because people come there to watch both. So there should not be a day where there are two bowling machines at both ends and one side has to just out bat, other bat, batting side. So, I mean, I, I feel there has to be fair balance between bat and the ball and that's the only reason I, I was suggesting that a side bats first for 25 overs, then the other team comes and bats for 25 overs and wherever they have stopped in the first half of the game at 25 overs, the second half of the game they start from there, they don't start fresh. If they have lost three wickets, those three batters are out of the game. The remaining batters will bat in the second half. So you don't have 20 wickets, you only have 10 wickets. And it does a lot of things, it involves support staff. Because otherwise what happens once the game has started, uh, for 50 years support staff cannot do, just keep sending few messages here and there, stand on boundary line and just tell the bowlers, oh, this is what I feel you should do. But you cannot bring the whole team together, have a brief meeting for 3-4 minutes and tell them, strategy A hasn't worked, let's move to strategy B. And so there will be dynamism. That is missing today. It's becoming too monotonous. And uh, even spectators know what's going to happen from over 15 to 35 or 40th over. They also know the pattern. But by introducing a newer format, sometimes, you know, there is an opening partnership. A couple of right-handers are batting. And one guy gets out and your standard left-hander is number three and you are in the 23rd or 24th over, you'll say, okay, the remaining 7-8 balls, I'm not going to send my left-hander because there, there are a couple of off-spinners bowling. And the left-hander bat, proper batter would also think, why should I take undue risk for just 6-7 balls? You send number 9, number 10, and say that anyways, if at all, you get to play 5-6 balls. Treat these balls as 5-6 balls and just go and enjoy yourself. That also gives a different dimension to a cricket match, spectators feel some action is going to happen. And then immediately you bring the other side in. So there are changes, but what it does is if it's a rain interrupted game, then you would have played first 25 overs and you would have played those 25 overs differently knowing that second half of the game there might be a rain. So if there is rain around the corner, you adapt different approach. Right. So, you know, a lot of strategies will come into play. I think I have an idea already. I think the patrons of the game need to gather in Bandra once. <laughs> <laughs> Every couple of months to just listen to you, ideate and speak what goes on into that inside that brilliant mind of yours. Thank you so much, Sachin, for taking the time out and doing this lovely interview with us. Absolute pleasure. Uh, much as I can, uh, I need to stop it. I would have loved this conversation to keep going on. But while it can't, we wish Sachin Tendulkar 
a very, very happy 50th birthday and I hope you enjoy this lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you.